Guys, I can't believe who I have in the RC Spark studio. Welcome, Joe, from Little Giants Construction Company. Joe, welcome to the show, brother. You got to be introduced on YouTube Gold the other day. How was that for you? Did you have fun? fantastic. Yeah, it was a great experience. Well, great day. Joe actually drove all the way out from Saskatchewan to give us a hand that day. Uh, and he actually got to give me the bird on the way out because I fired him. Ha ha. How was that? He did something that everybody uh, that's watched has wanted to do. It was probably pretty satisfying for them. That was pretty good fun, sure. <laughs> Turned out pretty good, quite seamless. We wanted, we wanted to make sure uh, that we had a great ending. Hopefully you guys enjoyed, but he is, he has stuck around uh, over the weekend for us to have a look at a couple of his trucks. Just like the title is suggesting, running two trucks, one radio. We got little giants here to kind of explain how this works. So, can you show us? Yes, not a, not a problem, so. Whoa, hold on a second. These guys are just seeing these trucks up close and they haven't seen it with the lid on. Look at this. This is a, what kind of truck is this? It's a, it's a Fumatec B50 Bell ADT. A Fumatec, I'm gonna have to put a link down in the video description box down below, uh, right beside where I'll put a link to your channel if people wanna check out your channel, uh, to that website to see that this isn't your standard run of the mill truck, right? This has actually uh, German engineering, is that where it's from? Yes. Okay. And if, could you run me through a little bit maybe before we go into the electronics about maybe the, uh, the pump. Like I notice your pump is a lot different than the one that I got out of uh, my Eagle machines, right? This is belt driven. Yeah, so while well, the belt driven is just part of the uh, model company designed to, to use a bigger motor at a faster speed but not run the pump too fast and, and not overflow the truck. So these ones here have a have a model number of 4002 in them which is 0.3 milliliter per minute and 4000 times 0.3 will, will give you your flow. Listen, I gotta say, I know a lot of people right now are kind of juggling around in their heads. Where have they heard Little Giant Construction Company before? And I gotta say, you're no stranger to YouTube. You've been on YouTube for how many years? Uh, since about December 2007. And, and if I may be both so bold to say, what is your claim to fame? What are you most known for? Uh, hauling dirt out of my basement. That's right, you are somebody that has been hauling dirt out of his basement as more or less as a hobby, but it's a kind of an interesting story on how it started. How the heck did you get dirt in your basement to begin with? Well, well my house was built in 1929, so, so that's just how, the, how they done it back then. Uh, it's not an overly big size house, it's uh, 18 by 28. Wow. So essentially they poured the foundation then they built the house and then when they wanted a, a coal pit and a, and a vegetable storage for the winter you know then they dug out just a small hole in the ground that's way beyond the, the foundation of your walls so what i had done from uh, about 2004 to uh, uh, 2012 i guess i virtually completed it was just widen out the walls and and, and put in wood curb walls to, to protect the foundation. And I heard at some point that you actually had a flood and a little bit of a slide in, is that right? Yeah, it happened by my water well there, so my, my house was never in trouble, but uh, some dirt came off, the, came off the wall there and blocked my entrance to the well, so. You had to get it out, and, and you decided to use RCs. <laughs> I started out with just a Leinbach uh, 922 Libra Traco, which is probably even, Smaller than your uh, uh, Eagle machinery, yeah. 4200 is yeah. probably 30% smaller than that one in wow. a, a Tamiya dump truck. And you have been digging for years ever since. Do you think you're ever going to be done? Uh, try not to. Yeah, that's the passion right there. That's the magic of this hobby and that's why people watching this video right now are so darn interested in these trucks. Now, we're going to have to show these guys because we've been waiting a little bit to show them exactly how to make this run. Now, you're using a Spectrum radio setup? I've been using a Spectrum probably about 10 years now. Your Spectrum, all we have to do from what I understand, if I may, there we go, two different receivers and and then you take the the bind plug here and, and you put it in the bind data port here which is right at the very front okay i've got one over here already you can see i've got the loop hanging out one in either receiver now i notice that you're using flight receivers is there any reason that you're using flight receivers the amount of channels or anything like that well well it's 
it's an eight-channel receiver, and, and as far as two-point four goes, like, does it matter for flight and? Crack? No, not at all. In fact, that's basically what we're looking at. Is a, a flight receiver normally has so many uh, channels on it. Now, this one being a DX8, obviously the two sticks are really what we're focused on here because one truck is going to be throttling forward and reverse and left and right on one stick, and then the other is going to be the opposite stick. Is that correct? Correct. Excellent. So can you show us the, the setup or generally, I don't want to make you have to redo anything, but maybe so the people at home can figure it out. Well, after you put in your bind plugs, then you uh, turn the model on. I don't have any master switches. I just plug the battery in so I never forget to unplug yeah. the battery. Plug them both in. You can see on the, on the receivers there that they're flashing. That, that means they're in bind mode. Yeah. And you have your bind plug here on your uh, radio. You press that in and turn the radio on and wait. Okay, holding in that button, we're waiting. Uh, the trucks will come in right away, but the radio takes a little bit longer and you wait till it beeps too. Okay, so that's an important tip. So even though I heard my trucks, we wanted to wait until we heard the radio give its signal that it was done binding as well. Yeah, so it's probably a pretty good practice now that they're bind. So yeah. Plug the models first and, and pull the bind plugs out. Absolutely. How many times have we all bound our vehicles, gone outside to use them and realized the plug was still in there? <laughs> I'm sure there's people commenting in the video comment section now that they have done that with their RZ models. Can you actually, can we take this outside and give it a test to see how it looks? Oh, sure. Right on. White cab in the front. He's your lead truck. Look at this, guys. Is that, is that mind blowing or what? Look at this, he's running two at once. We thought running one articulating rock truck was hard. This guy is doing a dual job. Convoy. I cannot believe what I am seeing here. The guys on YouTube Gold in the last episode uh, called The Foreman. They got to give this a try before the show started. Unfortunately, we had a little bit of technical difficulty with one of the trucks. We weren't able to get both of them there. Can you lift? Oh my God, there it is. Look at that, both trucks lifting at once. Can you control them independently or is it just both at once? I just got them on my auxiliary channels here, one and two. Okay, so so on one side, like this is your... So so. Being on controlling the stick with, with my right thumb, yeah. uh, I got the switch for the dump on, on this side. Okay. Wow. So if it's on the right, wouldn't it have been smarter just to have it on this one? Because it seems kind of oh, confusing. Because your thumb is busy here controlling the truck, ah. so you want to keep your other thumb open. See, so many people would have been asking that question, and now they know you're using your free hand, which makes m the most sense. If you're dumping on the go or something like that, and, and usually when I back into the pile, I'm just driving one truck at once to get into a narrow channel, and then you hit this switch, and you just, both fingers are occupied. I'm not somebody who likes trade radios. I've always preferred these because yep. I like to operate with my thumbs. Sure, yeah. Wow. Can I get a nice up close look at the uh, hydraulics? Like, let's get that bucket up and down and let's let the viewers at home see the, these hydraulic lines here. Or the rams. Look at that. It's such a beautiful sight. Articulating in the middle. Actual hydraulic fluid here, people. Now these trucks are not inexpensive. These aren't the things that you're gonna find on AliExpress, for example. These are coming straight out of, what is it, Germany? Germany That's yeah. what we were saying earlier? Uh, Central Germany. And so you're gonna be paying in euros for these, aren't you? Yeah, it's kind of pointless to comment in Canadian or yeah. US because you're buying euros, so. Yeah, and that's like world currency right now. It's like, its value is, is high, so. Sure. You're gonna be paying for uh, German engineering, uh, but like you were saying, the pump in this, for example, isn't the same pump that you'd be getting on uh, on on lesser sites that I would call lesser sites, but other sites with less expensive machines. These are more like industrial pumps that are gonna last a lot longer. Yeah, it's quite a bit different uh, technology and so on, and and just different uh, price levels for for 
people's interests, I guess. Yeah. It's kind of like buying your planes and your trail trucks and so on. There's there's all kinds of varieties. Or like parts. buying a full-size vehicle. You can buy one that rolls forward and does practically the same job, point A to point B for less money. And then you can get the, the higher tech stuff. It, the, the, the limit is the sky, hey? Sure, sure. That, that's exactly it's it. whatever you choose to afford. Wow. That's a good point. Yeah, that's a good way to say it. Lots of people have far too many hobbies, so, you know, they don't put everything into one hobby like I did. Pick one hobby and do it well, hey? Wait, 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 wait a second. Each one of these are driven axles back here. Right. You're kidding. This is just like that big dump truck I have that has two motors on the inside of the axle. Does this have a motor per wheel? Right. So, so, so with this one, it's a brush motor with about a hundred to one planetary gearhead on it. Wow. So that means, a, for those that don't know, a hundred rotations per one rotation of the tire, correct? Right. Okay, that's a hundred rotations of the motor shaft to get to one rotation of the tire. That's the gear reduction. Okay. Right. The, how come you don't have multiple ESCs in here? If you have multiple motors, I only see one junction box. So, so, so with brush motors, you can run one ESC and put 5, 10, 15 motors on. No, that many. Sure. Is it any particular one, or what's a speed controller you suggest that can handle that? Well, I'm using Sabretooth from... from uh, right, the robot side. shop. Yeah, nice. I see multiple ESCs back here. One, two, three, four. That plus two in the front. <laughs> Six ESCs plus the pump, or is that the one in the front? Is that one of the two uh, in the front? Plus the pump. Plus the pump. That's so about seven. seven electronic speed controls in this little unit. So being that this motor runs on brushless, it's got a tiny little mini brushless motor that's on the end of the gearhead. The brushless motor spins about 10,000 RPM, and the gear has about 256 to 1 to slow it right down, you know, as compared to the brush. But wow. I guess about the only downside to brushless is that you have to have one ESC per motor to make it work. You, you That's can't right. Yeah. Multiple yep. motors on yep. one ESC. So the wiring does get kind of complicated to. Oh, yes. I know it well on Overkill. I had to use four ESCs for four brush motors on his two transmissions. <laughs> Oh yeah, so trying to get everything linked and going the right direction. Yeah. And Timing is a real issue when you have that many things, but it, it, since each one is independently turning here, that's a big bonus. They don't have to be spot on perfect. They can still move slightly independent of each other. Well, like the difference between these two trucks being that you have more of a true six wheel drive with, with a separate ESC on each uh, wheel. Yeah. Separate ESC and motor. Yeah. And it, it gives you a more positive uh, six wheel drive, like six wheels on this brush will, will still turn, but it's one ESC that's trying to power the whole load and it just doesn't have quite enough power. Wow. This one will walk, you know, easily out of a pit with a fairly sharp ramp at 20 degrees or something like that, whereas this <laughs> one will stall out that the ESC just can't put enough power. So on a, ra a MA runtime of 5,000 milliamp hour, how much of, you know, how much drive time is that for you to, you know, on moderate throttle? Uh, it's hard to say because I've never run one from start to finish. It's generally uh, two hours, two and a half. There hours. you go, two and a half hours. Just, just insane. Can I give it a try? Oh, of course you can. Thank you. Look at this. Oh, you I gotta turn, turn the pump on. on. The pump. There we go. Two RCs at once. Wow. I can't believe I'm actually doing this. It's a lot harder than it looks, and I don't have the white truck pulling up the lead. Let's do that. So each one is input controlled with the throttle. Each ESC, of course, giving the speed as I want it to be controlled. So I better start catching up with the other one. We'll bring it around here so you guys can see. Joe, you make this look easy, bro. This is oh, I, not easy at all. I struggle. <laughs> it's hard for me to. I just think it's like technology, what it's allowing us to do these days with uh, 
with ra the hobby of radio control, just that in itself is, is mind blowing. Like right now, I'm basically using my mind <laughs> to control these two trucks. So I repositioned myself at the top of the hill because turning these around is almost like flying an airplane at you. All the controls, of course, are changed around. You can see it's actually me controlling. Wow, cool. I am so doing this. Now drive past the pit without falling in. You're darn right I can. Oh, there we go. Two at once. I've been known for doing a great job multiple times in my college years. Looks like I still have the knack. I got down in one piece. You are darn right. This RC sparks, baby. Look at the great machines I get to work with. This is like straight up respect right here. Yeah, they work pretty good. Oh, they do. I love these. All right, guys, so there you go. Little Giants Construction Company at the RC Sparks studio. You guys get to meet him in person. The big face reveal happened on, uh, on YouTube Gold. Joe, thanks a lot for coming out. That was a pleasure meeting you. Pleasure again. meeting you. Hopefully we get you back out here again with your amazing machines on RC Adventures, yeah? Yeah, we'll see what can happen. See you about Paul or something. Yeah, well, there you go, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure to go and check out the Little Giants Construction Company YouTube. Smash that subscribe and notify button, and we'll see you in the next episode of RC Adventures. Now get outside and have fun with RC. You know we always do. Bye-bye. See you guys.